Don't judge me, Faith. feel stuck completely and absolutely body mind and soul <laughs> on days like this I used to take myself to southern season I'd wander through the shiny kitchen supplies and get lost in the maze of impressive wines leave dazzled by the vast colorful array of candies but it's all gone now. It's online like the rest of us, no doubt caught in a Zoom meeting that will never end. Feeling stuck is a very distinct kind of feeling. Just the word itself, stuck, stuck, stuck. It stops your breath. When I was 30 years old, I felt this way. I was living in DC at the time. I decided to go home to Texas. I hadn't been there in years, eight years to be exact. Now, before I go on, I should say, I love my parents. <laughs> I love how they own DVDs and VHSs of very nearly every black film that's ever been made. I love how their bookshelves are filled with yearbooks, encyclopedia sets, and an 18th century British book of law. <laughs> There's also the complete works of both William Shakespeare and Sherlock Holmes. There are plays by Lorraine Hansberry, August Wilson, Tennessee Williams, Noel Coward, and Edward Albee. There are books by Richard Wright, old Toni Morrison, Betty Crocker, uh, and Emily Post. I love how Friday nights were for fish fries and grown folks playing dominoes on the front porch. Sunday mornings were for chores and trips to the lake to catch more fish for the, the week ahead. Sunday mornings were for church. Oh, everyone up early dressed in their finest. And Sunday evenings were for football. Football and pizza or enchiladas or neck bones and rice or chicken and dumplings. Just anything homemade by mama. I love how hard times were followed by prayer circles and good times were followed by dance parties in the living room. I love how we had enough, even though hardly had anything at all. Now, let me say, if going home is hard, leaving your parents behind is exponentially harder. Poverty does all kinds of things to you. But shame and guilt are by far the worst. Anyway, all those years ago, I felt stuck. So I went back home to get, I don't know, to get jolted out of myself. My mom was also having what would be the first of five back surgeries, the final one leaving her incapacitated. This is the term the doctors gave her, incapacitated. Incapacitated is defined as deprived of strength or power, debilitated or impaired by reason of physical illness or disability. It is true, mama's life changed irrevocably. She'd no longer work as a nurse, 
but she was still as strong as ever. Her back was shaped into a slight but noticeable permanent C. She didn't feel incapacitated, but she was in pain. The kind of pain that's constant and unrelenting. The night before her surgery, my mom had this terrible cramp in the calf of her left leg. It hurt her so bad, she opened her mouth to scream and no sound came out. I dropped to my knees in front of her and began to massage her leg, gently, most gently. I told her to take deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth, in and out, in and out, in and out. I remember she did the same for me when I was younger. I suffered from severe asthma. Later that same night, we were looking at family photographs. Uh, we don't actually have very many photos. There's not even enough to fill a book. But I found a photo of my brother. He's around five or six years old. He's standing in the doorway with his arms and legs stretched out long and wide. He's staring directly into the camera. His eyes are big and bright and his smile is, uh, it would light the room. He is wearing a Spider-Man costume. Oh, uh, make no mistake, in this moment, he is Spider-Man. And I looked at the photo and I looked at my mom and in that moment, I wanted to take away her pain. And not just the pain, I wanted to take away her worries and fears, her doubts and regrets, everything that had made her life hard. With the touch of my hand, I wanted to make it all disappear. And then it occurred to me that that is what superheroes do. All that flying around and leaping over buildings and impossible feats of strength and dexterity, they are working to stop the monsters and heal the wounds of the world. They give comfort, assurance, and they take away the pain. And I thought about what it means to be a superhero. What it takes to heal the people you love and keep them safe. You have to be you have to be strong and courageous. You have to have a good heart and be willing to sacrifice everyday ordinary things. You have to be wise and willing to serve the greater good. You have to be willing to admit when you're wrong. Learn from your mistakes and ask for help when you need it. But you have to be willing to fall. Fall completely and absolutely body, mind, and soul with great purpose and utter abandon. With your eyes opened wide to the world below and all around you, and with your arms splayed out at your sides. And you have to trust against all hope and reason and that which you know to be true, that eventually, eventually, you will learn how to fly. I shared my thoughts with my mother and she looked at me and laughed. <laughs> she
she said, no one needs you to be a superhero. You just need to be good and kind and do what is right for as many people as you possibly can. That's it, I said. That's it, she said. Choosing kindness is hard enough. Choosing love is hard enough, but that's all you need to do. And all these years later, when I think back on our time together and I think about how hard it is to be a human being and I think about everything we're facing as a nation, I realize that she was right. Of course she was. And of course I feel stuck. How are we supposed to move forward right now? Being able to choose kindness and love and doing what is right when the world around you is a complete and total raging dumpster fire? Well, that's one hell of superpower. <laughs>